Hi, my name is Joe Wright and I'm the guy responsible for the UKIA country kits for the 2019 and 2020 versions of Civil 3D. This is a third of eight UKIA e mini tip videos and in this outing we are going to work with codes and look at controlling their behaviour to help us to produce exportable geometry for setting out purposes. You will, of course, need to have the UKIA Country Kit for Civil 3D 2020 installed in order to take full advantage of what follows. To briefly introduce the concept of codes, when you create a cross-section assembly in Civil 3D, each subcomponent contains references to three types of code. A point code, a link code, and a shape code. Well-designed assemblies will have multiple codes exposed. Exposed codes can be given names and this reference can then be used for other things. As it happens we're going to be working with point codes in this video. In particular we are going to look at how we can expose these references and how we can use them to make new geometry. Let's roll up our sleeves and get on with this. Firstly, let's find our scheme. Here it is, a section of a ring road. Here the alignment you see is a data shortcut. If you're not using data shortcuts, then you really should be. But that's for another day. Right now, I'm just going to promote this alignment so I can make a major tweak by quickly dropping a ground profile into the drawing. Here's a long section. The red and blue profile line here represents the crown of the new road. The big change I'm going to do here is to exaggerate all this geometry in order to emphasise some of the processes we are covering. I'll do this simply by using some of the tools inside the geometry editor. Here we go. My kids would love this road, but my grandma wouldn't. OK, I'll quickly split the screen for visualisation purposes. So we have a horizontal design and we have a vertical set design. Now we need to build the cross section. So we need an assembly. When you drop an empty one into a drawing, it always zooms around it. To design this assembly, we will use two palettes. Here we are using the UKIE Design tab. We can add subcomponents to build our assembly. I'm going to add a detailed carriageway. Notice that I'm changing the insertion side to the right, so when I anchor it to the assembly marker it will be handed accordingly. Cool. Notice all the other options listed in this properties box. We will examine the documentation in a minute, but for now I'm just going to insert another lane, snapping it to a point at the end of the first. To look at the documentation, you can just simply right-click the subassembly icon in the tool palette, or you can even open the associated PDF file. The diagrams help you make sense of that previous property sheet and give you indications of how the geometry will be affected by changing certain values. They will also list the point codes. Here you can see that two point codes are set by default, crown and lane, and these have been labelled during insertion, here and here, oh, and here and here too. We don't really need this middle crown. So highlighting the subassembly and looking at the common code components section, we can change the appropriate value to no codes inside those chevrons. And this will hide that code point. Voila. Great. To move forward, I'll simply use the subassembly mirror command to complete all four lanes. So here we go. Let's make a corridor. In the newer versions of the UKA template, the default vertical profile name changed to include an underscore. This is a small change, I know, but it does mean that in most cases the correct vertical design will be listed first in this box instead of the existing ground. Bosh! We have a corridor. 
I'll just change its display so we can see the sections and then we'll have a peek in the object view. Fantastic. Notice that in wireframe the crown and lane points are all joined up. That's because these core points were declared on those property sheets. Looking back at the documentation, you can see how each point in the subassembly is referenced. In my example, I want to set out the formation levels at the base of the capping course. Here, here, and here. Let's look at that property sheet again. You can see these references are available, mostly listed under other code components but all are set to be no codes, which means they are hidden. All I need to do is find the code references from the documentation and unhide the relevant code points by typing in an appropriate name. In this case, for this point, it's CCP3. So I just need to assign it an appropriate name. The name can be anything, but it sort of makes sense that you give it something sensible. Then at the other side, for here again, the point is CCP3. Why? Well, after all, that subassembly was mirrored, remember? And the final point under the crown here will actually be CCP4. So I've given each of them a separate name. Now that we've exposed and named these points, if we rebuild the corridor and look again in Object Viewer, you will see feature lines are extruded between them. Take a look, the bluish lines here, here and here. Nice. This means we can generate a corridor surface from these feature lines. Let's do it. Whilst I know you could get a formation surface using links, I always prefer to use feature lines because I don't have to worry about over-anchorage. Notice the names I gave to each code point is listed. So I shall add each one. One, two, three, done. Ah, slight problem, I forgot to add a boundary. Can you see the spill out here? It's a quick fix, just go back and just add a boundary. There we go. We have a corridor surface at formation level. Superb. We're not quite finished, and this is the important bit. As contractors are increasingly asking for 3D geometry for GPS guided machinery, or just something easy to import into their software. The UK Country Kit comes with a bucket load of reports. They're here, on the Toolbox tab of the tool space. There are lots to experiment with, as you can see. But the one we need is the export for construction tool. Simply right click to execute the report. This essentially is designed to grab those feature lines generated from the codes and export them as 3D polylines to a standard AutoCAD drawing. That's the format that almost all contractors can use. Here you can see the code points we set up earlier. In the UKIE 2020 kit this tool was improved to dig down to site level and gives you the option to create a 2D variant. If you prefer the older one it's still available and is listed as a legacy variant. Simply execute the tool, select the corridor, choose the codes you exposed and export them to a new drawing of your choice. Go go go! And here we have the resultant drawing, just three entities representing the exported code extrusions. Here clearly following the capping course formation level of our exaggerated vertical design. This is a standard AutoCAD drawing and these are 3D polylines. So you do not need Civil 3D to open this drawing. You can send it to any contractor that can read DWG files. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. There are many similar ones on this YouTube channel. My name is Joe Wright. Thank you for watching.